Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. And today I wanna to show you something a little bit different than the videos that I put out usually on my channel. Usually we're just doing DIY repairs and improvements around the house to help you with those projects. But today I wanna to show you a little bit more behind the scenes. As a few months back, I went full-time in YouTube, but also full-time in buying, renovating, and reselling properties or a fix and flip business model. Now that's where a lot of the content comes from for the channel. I wanna show you an example of what is involved with actually fixing and flipping a property, just in case you're thinking about doing that yourself. Because I do think it is a great opportunity to supplement your income, possibly start building out a rental portfolio, or just saving for retirement. If you have tools, if you have some skill set, maybe you're a plumber, electrician, HVAC tech, drywaller, painter, day job, or you're just a, a DIY or really starting to improve their skill set, I think there's an opportunity, but it might not be as easy as you see on HDTV. So I want to show you this property, what we did and what we didn't do, and then go through the financials top to bottom. How much do we pay for? What well, were all the costs involved? All, absolutely every cost involved. And then how much did we actually make on this property? What we projected compared to what we actually will make on it. So you can see an example in more of a bread and butter community, three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. This is not next to the beach. This is not a high-end property. This is a normal deal that you'll probably see in your area or the smaller communities around your town. So let's go do a walkthrough. So you'll see the improvements that were made and then we'll jump into the actual dollars and cents or the financials on this project. So I'll just walk you through the Sony Ranch Rehab Project. We're within a week of closing this to show you what we did and more importantly also what we didn't do. So this garage has some water damage on that side I know that looks crazy, but this looks like wood paneling. It's not. It's actually, it's actually drywall with a wood paneling film. So when I removed the four by eight sheet there, I actually had to put just half inch drywall over it and try to get some paint and color match, which that does not. So we're going back and getting a little better color match. We just cleaned out this garage, really didn't do anything major. I did a little bit of rewiring uh, to the garage door and the lights, just so they made more sense off the light switch, which they did not before. All right, so I'll do some comparison videos so you can see the before and after, but this is a bonus room. And in this bonus room, it was wood paneling. So we just painted the wood paneling, put a new uh, fan light fixture, put new LED recessed lights, and then hung new vertical blinds. Also the new receptacles throughout and face plates. Overall, pretty lightweight. And I did most of this work except for I did hire out the painting. So that's always the balance is what you're gonna do compared to what you're gonna hire out. Now going into the kitchen, cabinets were in good shape. Counters were in good shape. Maybe not the most up-to-date color. But what we did in here is obviously blinds, new blinds throughout. Those are just one inch vinyl blinds, pretty cheap. The biggest difference in the kitchen is these recessed lights. So you can see there used to be an offset chandelier in the vanity light. So the vanity light was right over here. So we cleaned all that up. Uh, we did a little bit of drywall patchwork and then we went ahead and installed this LED recess. They're basically the wafer lights, super skinny awesome products. You can look in the description uh, below this video and I'll show you uh, what exactly we used. Here it's just painting. So this used to have some wallpaper. It was baby blue. The kitchen was dark blue. So we just neutralized it. And again, new receptacles throughout, new switches, new face plates to give a more updated electrical look. Then in the living room, we took out the old carpet, took out the old drapes. Now remember, with these projects, they're probably going to smell because it has years and years and years of people living, years of dust, years of dirt. So getting carpets out, especially if you have wood floors underneath, the wood floors are not in perfect condition, but they're in good condition. And for this price point, they are good. And then also I took up the old flooring at the entrance and then just put down some glue down vinyl plank with a little bit of threshold throughout. 
The biggest difference is the lighting. This had zero lights in the living room, and now it has eight of those LED recess wafer lights. This property is also content for this channel, so showing how to do some of these projects, which that LED light was a big project that we put out on the channel. Okay, coat closet, nothing we did there. Pink tiles stayed. Um, this is the balance. So we did not install a shower and we did nothing with the pink tiles. Why is that? Because they're in good condition. And then also I had a resurfacer come out and it was at a cost of about, so I was in good condition, about $3,000 or $3,500 to resurface correctly these tiles that go all the way around the room. So we left the vanity in place as well. And pretty much this bathroom's intact just with a little painting uh, blinds and just a little bit of refreshing on the electrical. Now we'll come back to, that's a utility closet here. That was the biggest part of this job. That is the reason I was able to purchase this property uh, for a discount because of the issues there. So we'll talk about that and go over the numbers. So there is bedroom number one. Just updated the electrical, put the new fan in, put the blinds, just really freshened it up. No, no work other than that. Same thing with bedroom number two, just freshen things up, get it ready for the next family to live in, and then the master bath. Now there was, same thing just updated, there was damage to this side here. So all the way around here, I cut at 48 inches and then just put new drywall down because that damage came from that issue with the utility closet. So that was the, one of the bigger issues. I'll show you that video before where you'll see the damage where the plaster was actually coming off down below. I didn't do a ton to this bathroom. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can get a better. But we did remove the box up top, so I did that just to give more headroom. It didn't make sense before. It was very low for the shower. I also had to remove the tile off this wall and because there was a lot of damage. There was also a lot of damage to the subfloor, which I needed to get in. Uh, and that was the major work, is cleaning up the water damage from the HVAC. So just cleaned it up, right? Cleaned it up. Um, did a little rewiring I used to have the switch was right here for the exhaust fan. So I rewired that over to uh, where it makes more sense, where the other light location was. And that is pretty much it. Still a little dated, but then also the flooring went out and that is new flooring. It's a glue down vinyl. Actually, it's, I call it vinyl plank, but it's actually kind of a travertine 18 inch uh, lookalike product. But it's actually a really good product. Okay, so let's talk lastly in terms of improvements about the utility closet. So this, I'll show you the picture or video from before. This guy had a lot of water damage around the HVAC system. So I had to remove, I, ha I hired out a local HVAC company to remove the heater and air conditioner unit during the middle of winter in Illinois. It was 15 degrees outside, so I had to put electric heaters in place and then work fairly quickly to tear out all the subfloor, to tear out the drywall. I removed the water heater and replaced it and to put that back together. That is why we got the property. There was a water leak. There was an old uh, humidifier here and that humidifier and also the drain line, this drain line, was all scabbed together. And those both had leaks and probably had leaks for a year or more, which shot all this subfloor, got water in the other rooms and also with the drywall. So that was the biggest part. I did a lot of that labor myself and that's also how I was able to save on the rehab project. And now probably the most important part and that is truly the financials, the dollars and cents, how much did I buy for, how much did I spend, or how much did I sell for, and then ultimately what is that profit? So I have the numbers baked right here, we'll review them, but a few things to note just so you can relate this project to maybe one that you're thinking about taking on or one you're taking on right now. 
The only things that I've hired out for this, the main, by far the main cost was painting. So I did paint most of the walls. I didn't really mention that in the walkthrough, but we did paint almost all the walls and a, about half, I'd say, of the rooms in terms of the ceilings. Then I hired out landscaping, which was very cost effective, a couple hundred bucks, and then about seven or eight hundred dollars worth of the HVAC tax. So the guys that come in, remove the the air handler in the air conditioning unit, get me down to where I could patch in the drywall, patch in the subfloor, get everything back, and then they came back in and installed everything and made sure the system was working. Other than that, I swung the hammer. So I did pretty much everything else. So this was a very active project for myself. And I think that's good. You learn a lot and you're really involved in your projects. Long term, will I be doing that? Probably not. If you're swinging the hammer yourself and you're doing six rehab projects a year, you're, you're doing pretty darn good. If you wanna go past that, you're gonna to have to start getting more labor involved and basically just GCing or being the general contractor on the job. So the numbers. Purchase price, $58,000. We had a lead commission cost. So this lead came through an online system that I'm partnered with. And that's 4% of the purchase price that I need to pay back to them for all their online marketing that eventually ends with me getting a lead. Closing cost on the buy side was $1,277. And then you'll see some of these numbers projected compared to actual. The actual will be either green or red. If it is green, I did better than the projected. If it is red, I did worse than I projected. So rehab, so rehab materials, this also includes utilities. I just baked in the utilities, which was a little less than $1,000. So what I spent on materials was 6,200, which was less than I projected but I went a little over on my labor spending 6,800 compared to the 5,000 that I had projected. Closing costs on the sell side, which is coming up here in a week, is gonna be $1,725, which is a little shy of the $2,000 I projected. And then realtor commissions is a little bit less because the sale price is a little bit less. So it's 6,300 compared to what I projected, which was 6,480. Now, all that rolled up was very, very close. So I'm all in on this project for $83,588. So that would be what I need to sell the property for. And then after that is profit. Now I listed for 105,000. The market is very good in my area. Technically, we just had a coming soon sign in the yard and we had people walking through the construction site to see it. So we ended up getting a full price offer after they tried to negotiate but I just wasn't willing to budge because we didn't even go on the market and the market is very hot. I probably could have went over asking price, honestly, if we did an open house. And this is in a community that would never have multiple offers. This is the best real estate market. This is March, 2021, it's insane. So do keep that in perspective if you're getting started in 2021. So all that rolls up to a profit of $21,412 when I had originally projected $24,893. I try to make a $25,000 profit on each of these projects and that is with my labor being baked in there. So it's not like I'm hands off making 25,000. This is a very active project for me. The difference there is basically that difference in sale price. but. I'm interested here from you guys. Is this something you're interested in? Is it something you're doing? Let me know and let me know what questions you have. Do you want me to do more videos on how to get leads, how to finance these deals? Sorry, the cost of capital I did leave off actually here when we were rolling things up. So I was about $1,000, $966 in terms of cost of capital. All that is is paying myself 4% on the money I borrowed. I just borrowed the purchase price and this project's gonna take me start to finish about four and a half months, just to let you know. So I'm about four and a half months from when I buy it to when I'll actually close and then everything in between. Can you do it faster? For sure. Can you do it slower? Absolutely. So that, but four months is, is not a bad ballpark, especially going through a full closing process. But I'm happy to share this type of information with you guys if it helps you in your own journey. I think this is very smart to do but it is all on the buy side. I could have purchased this property 
done absolutely nothing and then flip that to a local rehabber for probably around $80,000. So technically, there's some closing costs in there. I probably would have made about fifteen dollars to $18,000 if I didn't do anything. Now, long term, that's probably a better strategy and better use of my time. But I'm learning, I'm enjoying, I'm creating content for the channel. So for me, these projects are, are a win-win. Last thing, there are links in the descriptions for the actual project videos. So if you're interested in those LED lights, I did a few plumbing projects, these type of things. I'll put those links of what actual projects I documented on the YouTube channel in this. And then also I'll put links to the different products we use. So those LED lights, but also like paint colors and different things, just in case you guys are interested. If this video helped out, we'll have more coming up, but I need to get your feedback. You guys gotta let me know if this is interesting to you or not. If it is, I'll continue to create, sprinkle in these type of videos within our normal how-to DIY projects. So we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.